So, good morning again. I welcome you uh, here in this uh, Agora on culture and creative industries. Thank you for being here. Thank all the, these nice people that are sitting around for your presence here. I am uh, delighted to host this great Growing Together event in Athens, and I'm also excited for this particular segment. It was uh, actually our choice to have this kind of discussion because we strongly believe on the opportunities and prospects of this culture and creative uh, industries, uh, the, the potential. Uh, we understand that creative economy is the cement that brings together not only hearts and souls, but entire societies and nations. And I think you all agree on that. I'm very honored and proud of this synthesis of this Agora. We have with us distinguished uh, personalities that represent different and common angles of the creative economy sector, willing to share their experiences and their views on, uh, on this subject. So together with us, we have Mrs. Sofia Efremoglu. I will start by presenting her skills and her positions. I'm, I was wondering whether she sleeps at all so she is an executive vice president of the board of directors of the foundation of the Hellenic world and head of the Hellenic cosmos, the cultural center. She is president of the national chamber network of Greek women entrepreneurs, vice president of the BO board of directors of the Athens Chamber of Commerce Executive, treasurer of the Alba Graduate Business School, member of the, Hellenic, uh, the general council of the Hellenic Federation of Enterprises and Industries, and she's also a board member in various big companies like Terna Energy Group, Lavi Farm, and uh, etc. And uh, then we don't have uh, Joseph Saman, who is the founder of Tanwir uh, Group, uh, due to a uh, light uh, sickness. But we have with us Yanis Kalfakakos, who is the vice president of the Tanwir Group a senior executive having served as CEO in uh, the Villas Roadshow Group and general manager at Southeast Europe Starbucks. We are delighted also to have Mrs. Uh, Vera Kempft. I think you had a chance to enjoy her, uh, her speech uh, uh, earlier on on the main stage. She's a, a young entrepreneur, an international online art gallery, having raised, but I will let you talk about it, a bunch of amount of money for her uh, uh, startup. Uh, and uh, let's not forget to share your story on how you met and how everything uh, started. Then we have Mrs. Kalyobi Haralabus. She is director of the Athens International Children's Fil Film Festival. She is um, she's with us and she, she will share with us how important their project is to education and on sculpturing the souls and the characters of all children, and not more. Last but not least, he's our, our digital futurist. He's uh, Dimitris Dimitriadis, Chief Innovative Innovation Officer in the Future Cuts. He's um, uh, committed, as he says, to explore the future and to spot the trends and technology that are shaping it. And his mission is to give the world a better understanding of how society, human interactions, and business will look like in the years to come. So, as you understand, we are gathered here to, to, um, to, to prove there is a lot of things more to happen in these industries. So, starting from you, Mrs. Efremoglu, can you give us your view on how important it is to act and to create in this, um, in this environment, this one of the culture and the creativity. Good morning. There is no doubt that culture is a valuable social asset and as such it can generate massive returns in terms of shaping identities and promoting sustainability in many ways. Let me first start by talking about how cultural heritage, both tangible and intangible, can be a driver for sustainable growth. In modern thinking, cultural heritage is recognized as a catalyst for economic and social development where conservation and usage can be harmoniously combined as partners in the process. 
the overall challenge is to go far beyond simple conservation, restoration, physical rehabilitation of a site and to demonstrate heritage potential as a powerful economic, social and environmental catalyst for a regeneration, sustainable development, economic growth and improvement of people's well-being. For Europe, and especially for Greece, the cultural industry is a useful means of rejuvenation for many regions, contributing to economic growth, trade and employment. Indeed, the cultural industry contributes around 4% to the European GDP, which translates to more than 500 billion of economic production. So we need culture. And in order to build a culture-based growth enhancing and a resilient ecosystem, we have to embrace new technologies. About 2.8 billion euros will be allocated for the cultural sector through the implementation of the European Recovery Plan in the next few years. One of the main projects of the plan relates to the development of digital models of cultural production and distribution and the promotion of the Greek cultural brand. Therefore, the sector is expected to experience rapid growth as it integrates artificial intelligence, digital technology, and extended reality applications. At the Foundation of Hellenic World, we are fully committed in preserving and disseminating Hellenic history and tradition through the use of new technologies in order to make it more appealing and educational, especially for the younger generation. From our very beginning in 1993, we presented to the Greek and international community the first Greek website of 50,000 pages of historical content and created a pioneering lab of three-dimensional reconstructions. The technology of 3D representations that we use for the reconstruction of monuments in sight of Hellenism that have been partly or completely destroyed we are doing the scientific documentation and the creation of the 3D models at the foundation, working together with the archaeological schools that have excavated the different sites. Our uh, 3D representations have received numerous awards, and our 3D Olympia and Olympic Games documentary constitutes a permanent exhibit at the Olympic Games Museum in Lausanne, Whereas our 3D virtual representation of the House of Dionysos in Pella was the first digital exhibit to be ever displayed equally among all other exhibits at the Louvre Museum. Um, our uh, cultural center, Heren Cosmos, has innovative programs, interactive exhibitions, virtual reality interactive theaters, AR, VR showrooms, and uh, in a few days you are going to see also our virtual reality pods of the latest technology. We have welcomed millions of visitors from Greece and abroad, and our VR interactive show about ancient Olympia has been voted by Disney Cruises as the best shore excursion in the world. We have many interactive uh, productions as uh, for Asia, for ancient Miletus in Asia Minor, a, uh, ancient Prien, ancient Agora of Athens, Acropolis, Hagia Sophia. And recently we signed an MOU with the Archbishop of America, Elpidophoros, uh, to take all our VR shows and exhibitions to the United States audience, acquainting them with our culture. Also, we create digital museums in Athens and other regions in Greece. A remarkable undertaking is the Plato's Academy Digital Museum, where philosophy and digital technology meet in an interactive exploration of Plato's school of thought. The museum invites all Athenians, but also the vis city's visitors, to travel back in time and news on the enduring philosophical questions posed by Plato on the very spot where he walked and taught 2,500 years ago. This museum that we created is a proof of how a non-touristic area can be touristically and culturally developed using technology. During the pandemic, we offered for free on the internet all our documentaries, some of our previous exhibitions, 
as uh, well as the virtual tours of ancient Prien and Olympia, making them in this way accessible to the public all over the world. This year, we proudly present the XR Cosmos program and introduce a new productive model of innovation and growth using extended reality. This program is aimed at supporting, developing, and extroverting the innovation ecosystem that governs the extended reality applications. XR Cosmos is a series of actions, events, and initiatives where all stakeholders from the research, investment, and corporate field join forces. We organize innovation competitions in order to promote and reward original ideas based on XR technologies that we will showcase to the public and raise investment opportunities. Another important initiative is the Bridges. It's a European program that aims at bridging the gap between interactive technologies and industries by bringing extended reality to the real world. Our mission is moving towards the democratization of XR by delivering a flexible and scalable solution that can be easily integrated and customized to the needs of a variety of different shareholders. For instance, imagine a guided storytelling experience inspired from daily life in classical Athens following the activities of an Athenian family in their house, then out in the city as it was thousand years ago. Through XR, you can travel back in time and partake in an everyday life experience in antiquity. Such an interactive multi-sensory experience combining historical accuracy can enhance knowledge about the past and historical empathy. Another research program that we run aims at developing and improving the existing know-how and applications of language recognition and sentence tagging, as well as developing and promoting research to synchronize live oral performances and written subtitles to be displayed on smart glasses in theatrical performances and live cultural events. The application is addressed to people with hearing problems, making cultural content accessible through Greek and other foreign languages uh, subtitles in order to combat social exclusion, thus contributing to the promotion of the cultural heritage and the further development of the touristic product. The foundation of the Hellenic world and our cultural center have been established as a living cell of culture and an incubator of research, innovation, and creation. Our vision is to continue on the same path of disseminating our culture and history using new technologies, promoting innovation and creating change. And as we live in challenging times, please let me conclude by echoing Victor Hugo's words. Peace is the virtue of civilization. War is its crime. Thank you very much. We thank you. We cannot thank you enough for what you're doing uh, in the Hellenic Cosmos Foundation because we understand you amuse and educate the Greeks. You provide a very interesting spot to visit for the tourists. And uh, also you incorporate all these research base and innovation uh, uh, promotion through the new technologies and so on and so forth. So thank you for your great job. Uh, Mr. Karfakakos, uh, can you share us a little bit about what you're doing in Tanware? Because I know you have invested much in the Greek content, the Greek history, and uh, some great films uh, you have recently launched. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, as a company, we believe a lot in uh, producing, developing content uh, regarding our heritage and our heritage starts from mythology up to the coming day, to the coming, uh, to the current days. And uh, the last uh, couple of years, our production company developed uh, three, four very significant uh, uh, IPs uh, that uh, they had distribution in all formats, uh, like uh, Eftihia, it's uh, uh, the almost a biography, but with a lot of fiction inside, of a very, the most important uh, lyrics uh, writer. Uh, lately, right on the pandemic, we released uh, Smirni Mo Agapimene, which we produced it. And uh, this had to do with the minor Asia 
catastrophe and uh, the refugees that they arrived and how current it is not only the, even on the current situation with uh, Ukraine and uh, what are they facing. We, we produced a documentary regarding uh, ancient uh, technology and uh, how relevant and useful uh, it's uh, in today's uh, uh, mechanics. And we believe a lot uh, that uh, Europe has the, uh, the culture that uh, unifies it and same principles and values. And uh, our job as producers and distributors is to bring uh, that culture to the world and uh, to monetize out of that because we believe it's the, it's the biggest industry. Honestly, it's the biggest industry. Only uh, this current year, $150 million uh, are, uh, are spent uh, to produce content, uh, IPs. And uh, we see all these years uh, the major uh, producers, usually from the States, uh, that uh, they invest, they invest in technology, uh, the platforms is a current situation, we see it uh, and they're coming, all of them, except Netflix, uh, HBO Max is, is in Europe already, uh, Disney Plus, and the coming others. And uh, definitely we have, our vision is to develop a, a European platform that uh, would share uh, these storylines that come out of the European culture, and since we are sponsored, uh, we are gathered here France and Greece, uh, we could have co-productions on France and Greece. There are programs in the EU supporting uh, co-productions, but uh, definitely in order to make big quality, we need a serious uh, financial and legal uh, mechanism and ecosystems, and we need also uh, a fund to support uh, this type of productions, like they do in the States. Uh, filming of content uh, gets financed by the banks. Nobody, uh, and it's secure. Here in Europe, we don't see it, especially in our country, we don't see it. We're as... getting there. We're getting there. Know, We're working know, on I know, it. I know. We have systems in place. Uh, cash rebate it was a very important uh, thing that it was initiated in Greece and attracted also from other countries' productions, but we need to support it now with infrastructure. We need studios, we don't have enough studios. We need uh, talent, and I'm not talking only about actors. Uh, we need the cameramen, editors, uh, uh, light specialists, the sound specialists. They are not enough for the volume that we are receiving, so training is very important. Uh, and Okay. And I believe uh, we are on that path. I'm aware that the Greek government is developing uh, two schools regarding uh, talent uh, of uh, this type. And uh, it's very important also to, as it was mentioned before by the researchers, uh, virtual reality, uh, extended reality, uh, augmented reality, it was a very good example, the Plato Museum, very good example. And uh, we have to see how can we monetize from our uh, culture. And we have to be closer to speak in uh, whatever we develop to the metaverse where the younger generation uh, can understand it much better. We, we don't have to be traditional in uh, developing uh, content. And uh, overall, I feel personally, but also as a group, that uh, culture will uh, protect us from all the bad things like wars. Uh, it's uh, very important uh, to, to be all together and uh, develop all together. We work together. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Kafakakos. This is, this is exactly the objective of this Agora. It's just to showcase how important it is to invest in these areas. 
So as for us and for policymakers to design financial instruments that will uh, facilitate uh, funding to all these uh, activities because it's, it's a good time to define what is the creative economy and how many uh, industry sectors are included. It is architecture, books, newspaper, magazine, gaming, music, art, uh, performing arts, radio, television, visual arts, so on and so forth, and all the other activities that are serving um, uh, supportively to these, uh, to these uh, main, let's say, sectors. And I don't think 4%, I know it is 4% uh, the, the employment rate in these sectors, but it's much more, especially in less developed countries. So, uh, Vera, you can be our strong argument on why uh, it is essential to form financial instruments and invest in these sectors. You're a very good example. Please share your journey. Thank you. Yes, Singularit is at the intersection of art and tech. Um, we believe that tech can challenge the status quo of a sector that is quite outdated. When we started the company, it was really important to us to bring back artists and creativity at the center of everything we do. When I started looking at the market, I wondered why are there so few female artists exhibited in galleries? Or why, when I was asking people knowledgeable in the art world in different countries, who are the artists that I should know? I always kept hearing the same names at an international level when there were so many professional artists living from their art in each country, but that were not known at an international level. So it was kind of an hegemony of Damien Hirst and Jeff Koons everywhere where diversity is, is what matters in the creative space. And last but not least, and this is more business oriented, I couldn't understand why it was so difficult for traditional gallerists to admit that yes, some collectors return artworks and even Picasso artworks because it doesn't fit with the carpet or the sofa color. And at, a, at the end of the day, that's not a problem because our collectors, the people that Singular is, um, is aiming at bringing creativity to, they want to live with artworks. They want to bring creativity in their day-to-day -day world. So obviously, there are some logistical constraints as well. So Singularit, now that we were founded in 2017, we made a successful Series B in November, raising 60 million, because after five years, we were finally able to prove that we were not just operating in the traditional art market, but we were going into an adjacent market that is the premium home decor. But believe me, in 2017, it was so hard to convince investors to make them understand what was the market we were really operating in, probably because VC business angels, they had the perception that art was a financial asset, first and foremost. So they didn't really picture the persona, this collector, that again, want to live with beautiful things around them and not think about art as always being an investment and not always looking for the next marketable artist to invest in. And so it's really when we had data, finally, after five years, so this is super long, um, we had data to prove who our collectors are. So from the 60 billion uh, art market, we're adding a 270 billion market, that is the home premium decor. This is because we looked at the pictures that our collectors were sending us with the artworks on the wall, we saw beautiful design pieces. Then we got to listen to design creators and we understood they had the same struggles than our artists. Make it to the international space was really difficult. So we just launched the design vertical on Singularity. 
We also launch a new platform, balthazard.com, for amateur artists, for us to transfer the knowledge that we learned with our professional artists to help artists first taste their audience before they can picture themselves as living from their art and make the big jump. Because we believe with tech and data, we can reduce this time that when you ask an artist, how long did it take you to become an artist? It's sometimes between 10 and 15 years that they can say, yes, I could finally say I'm living from what I do and I enjoy. So we want to reduce that time to, let's say, two years. It's also to make the world of art more inclusive because just because we're selecting artists on objective criteria, we represent now 49% of female artists. So very different from what I was mentioning, uh, what is happening on the traditional world. 49% of female artists. And just, it's just uh, to say that five years ago, I had no clue I will launch design. I had no clue we will launch a platform for amateur artists. This is super important for you investors to understand that if we have the value when we start the project, we, we knew we had this intuition. But obviously, we couldn't predict what was happening. When you start a business, you're focused on delivering the first milestone of your business, which was selling artists through a digital platform. And Dimitris was asking me, as many people are asking me currently, what do you think of NFTs? And yes, probably we will add this brick to our current business. But again, as, as Marco mentioned, um, creating value is an obsession for entrepreneurs. And so I think this goes very well with the creative industries because artists are so much focused on creating value as well. Thank you. And give us the two numbers. How many artists do you uh, host in uh, your gallery today? 10,000. From how many countries? 140. Okay, super. So, Calliope, let's talk about the Children F uh, Film Festival. I heard, I read actually recently in a study uh, that was, uh, I think it was Deloitte that had made the study, and it says somewhere that creative economy is the part of the economy that tells our stories and the creative works we leave behind as a society are likely to define how future generations understand us. So having said that, let me tell you a story then. <laughs> uh, hello everyone, um, thank you for having me. So um, four years ago, um, uh, Christos, a fifth grader from um, a tiny island which is called Arki, uh, took a boat to um, a nearby island, which is called Lipsy, and then um, he took a nine-hour boat trip to Piraeus. It was his first time ever traveling to Athens, and when he and his teacher arrived in, in Athens, they met another 10 fifth graders from a remote mountain village of Pramada in Epirus, somewhere in uh, northeastern Greece. Uh, all together, they, th that same day, they, they joined 50 more kids of all ages um, and their foster families at the um, SOS Children's Village, which is a place for children who cannot grow up with their biological parents. Why am I telling you this story? And what was the occasion? The occasion was the um, Athens International Children's Film Festival opening night. We uh, screened a film there, a Belgian film, about a girl from Congo who wants to live in Europe despite not having uh, legal documents. She wants to have a normal life. And uh, we screened the film and then uh, members and cast uh, flew from Belgium for the occasion and we threw a big party and it was fun. But it was more than that. So in 2018, uh, we um, uh, founded Athens International Children's Film Festival in order to introduce uh, intelligent filmmaking for children and youth 
and um, in order to make it accessible to all. That's why I told you the story. Um, we also founded Athens International Children's Film Festival in order to um, create connections and to um, create connections with the youth of Europe the youth of the world and of course the international film industry, but also connections with values, thoughts and new ideas. So we have decided to invest in culture and in the generations to, to come uh, using a very powerful tool, the art of cinema. So we tell them stories. Uh, we communicate and promote um, this amazing mosaic of multicultural images, stories from all over the world, stories with diversity, stories with um, adventure, um, curiosity, uh, beautiful, inspiring stories. And we, we work hard in order to make these stories accessible to all and share these stories with everyone. Um, and, and the purpose is to try and defy all geographical or social barriers between cinema and the audiences. So bringing audiovisual content to um, disadvantaged groups and communities of all kinds and making it possible for children in, in remote areas of Greece to experience the world cinema for their ages, uh, for, for their age, for us it means growth and development and it also means change and I will give you an example. Every year in Greece, 700 to 1,000 children um, are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, uh, although we do not have official statistics and numbers. Um, do you think there is um, a Available, how much, how, how do you think there is um, audiovisual content accessible for those kids? Do you think they can go to the movies? Do you think um, um, they have powerful, uh, inspiring audiovisual content for their teachers to teach them, to teach them in class? So um, together with our partners, we have developed a fully accessible uh, digital screening room. Uh, offering audiovisual content to all, free of charge, um, including children with physical and developmental disabilities. And uh, we have also worked with our partners, the venues, the cinema venues, in order to make our, our screenings sensory friendly to people in the autism spectrum, but also uh, uh, accessible to people with physical, physical disabilities. We're trying to create a culture there. So, as a cultural non-for-profit organization, this is the way we see, this is our vision, to bring together those forces which are going to create change. And as everyone said before, it's, it's, it's a value that we all share. This, this is because this is where we see potential, this is where our passion is, and this is how we want to communicate with our investors, our invent, uh, in, uh, investing partners or our uh, supporters, donors, etc. So um, we can affect the world, I, I do believe so, empowering the youth, I feel that this is, this, this is uh, what we should be doing and offering memorable experiences to, to all those children who have attended our programs in the past five years and uh, exposing them to the world and to new ideas um, or pro participating in thought-provoking programs, film programs and open discussions um, which are not only directed to children, they are also directed to their parents and their educators or educating the educators, which is another very important aspect of, of our job. So becoming a platform that encourages dialogue, creative and critical thinking, this is the way we see, this is, the, this is how we see our mission. Um, I'm finishing. Uh, so, um, so far private and institutional partners have embraced embrace their vision and um, audiovisual content is becoming um, accessible and available to all. Uh, what is the next step? The next step is to create this network of festivals around Europe which are going to, um, which, with which we're going to share our learnings and our findings when it comes to accessibility and uh, inclusion. Which um, One would think that they were ahead of us but 
it's not necessarily true. And the next, the other next step, the organic next step would be to create, to uh, invest in local Greek audiovisual content for children and youth. I think we should um, all do our best to educate and inspire the local film industry, to invest and to create content for the youth. We need to start telling the world our stories. Thank you very much. We thank you. Thank you for your spirit, your passion, your commitment is evident. I'm sure you will make uh, big things there. And with the occasion of having you here, I, I checked a little bit uh, the site of the festival, and I think uh, uh, it is um, very suitable and perhaps more uh, acceptable to teachers and parents. It was very uh, interesting and uh, educational. So, you know, parents and teachers who start uh, watching the stories first and then the children. But I, I will get back to that. Dimitri, Mr. Dimitriadis, what is this metaverse? What are these NFPs? I don't understand. We will tell everything. Tell us. Everything. So, have you ever wondered what the art world will be in 30 years? Uh, what the tendencies of this scene will look like in the future? Uh, I will try to explain everything and uh, what about the evolution of art galleries? Will AI support uh, the collectors? Will AI assist the curators in everyday life? So, as we all know right now, technology is an unstoppable force. Uh, from the Stone Age uh, to the AI tools, uh, gives creators the creative ability to create innovation, to create new experiences for the human brain. So, almost 21 years ago, in 1st of August 1991, the World Wide Web changed the way we communicate and the way we live uh, right now. Uh, today, Web3, which is the evolution of uh, uh, Web1 and uh, Web2, uh, much like the foundation of the metaverse, uh, and uh, of course non-fungible tokens, cryptocurrencies, and all these new technologies are giving the space to the art world to evolve. So, the latest and most loudest uh, example, it was on February uh, 2022, where uh, uh, a JPEG, uh, an NFT called it Every Day, is created by an artist uh, with the name Beeple, sold for 69 million euros, uh, and uh, this JPEG was minted as a non-fungible token and sold it through Ethereum, which is uh, a transaction that uh, uh, Christie's did for the first time in 255 years of the history of uh, the organization. So, before we go to the future, let's quick clarify what an NFT is, because I get asked a lot. So, NFT is a digital asset, is a digital asset for virtual or physical assets that uh, we can uh, exchange or buy mostly with cryptocurrencies. Uh, for me, it's not just an asset. We think that uh, as regards it's a collectible or it's a certificate. No, it's more than that. It's a huge utility that will change the art world uh, as we know it. So, uh, also we have other technologies like augmented reality, virtual reality. We hear XR, extended reality. And... Uh, of course, these old technologies are shaping the future and the future of the art world. Uh, we recognize the technology, we recognize the relationship between art and technology, and we can uh, understand that we will experience this kind of art. So, uh, moving to the future, my favorite question is, 
how the future will be. And uh, I can assure you that uh, as regards the vision of the future, there are as many visions as are futurists, artists, writers out there. And uh, try to predict in the future is just uh, a shot in the dark. But one thing that we can predict is that this future can be inclusive. We can work towards a very inclusive future in the art world that already uh, drives us to this uh, direction. And uh, of course, we can do better because uh, the future is uh, made by us and not by the apparatus. We are humans. And let, me, let me give you now some three technology trends that will save the future. One is the dematerialization. We think that uh, uh, art is something out of material form, and digital art is something which is in the digital realm. Uh, we are going to change that, and people, uh, we are going to use, an artist of course, they are going to use cross things uh, augmented reality, digital, we're going to see uh, very different ways of moving away from the physical by being there. So uh, I will give you an example. Imagine someone visiting an art gallery or a museum by just using a jump suite uh, and a VR headset. Uh, or even better, a brain-computer interface that can, uh, uh, can have smell, taste, touch, and of course, enjoy what the marvel of the artists have created for them. So uh, we are moving to a dematerialization world of art. The next is the neo-hybrids. The neo-hybrids, as I uh, call them, is we have body art. Okay, we know body art. Now we are going to bio art, and this is uh, something that uh, 3D printing, uh, 3D printing in terms of organic or non-organic uh, parts are helping us to enhance our bodies and live new experiences from the perspective of the artist. I will give you an example, like we have a virtual reality of uh, Knossos and we can transmit that directly to uh, a brain uh, computer interface and people are, uh, imagine that I mention a lot brain computer interfaces but there is Neuralink that Elon Musk's uh, company is doing right now. There are many other brain computer interfaces that in three years we're going to see in the mainstream. So uh, imagine uh, a brain computer interface and you are living in uh, the actual Athens of, uh, and uh, of course we have questions about the ethical dilemmas and the, uh, we are going to uh, live with AI. AI could design a new digital consciousness. And last but not least, and I will uh, conclude, uh, deep game storytelling. Uh, my mentor, Ray Kurzweil, uh, said that we are going to experience stories through the eyes of uh, the actual characters. So uh, in the future, viewers may be transported to uh, a carefully elusive crafted world that uh, we can use holograms, we can use VR, and uh, why not even a group of Westworld-like uh, robots that we are going to uh, play with and understand, uh, and we cannot uh, say that this is real or not. So uh, technology is changing our lives every day, uh, now and of course in the future, and uh, the imaginary rises as soon as to be a actual reality. Uh, of course, we understand the impact of technology and enhancing of uh, then uh, the never-ending questions around life or art. 
one thing that I want you to, uh, to take out of this that aren't you a little bit excited to, uh, or even curious to what lays ahead. So uh, at the end of the day, we are here to create that because as I say, future is a human invention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dimitris. You know, I have this uh, dilemma as I was uh, hearing w w what, we, what you said and also building on what uh, the Hellenic world uh, offers to the people. If there was a digital Knossos, would someone want to visit the actual Knossos? And I think that the answer is that we have to share the knowledge, we have to show people, show the world what we are and what is our history. And then a real visit on spot in Knossos gets even more value. That's where I conclude. I don't know. Exactly, exactly. We, we must see virtual reality and augmented reality as an actual promoter and live demo of the actual experience because we are going to live the actual experience. Uh, we like to dive, but if we can do a dry dive with a VR headset, we are going to dive for sure. So if we can visit a virtual Knossos with the best way possible, for sure we are going to go there. And if we can have in Knossos an enhanced reality that we can live in XR, uh, it will be even better as a, an experience. It's like you, Vera, having made art a commodity. What is the biggest disruption you achieved? And I will have a, 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 a short question to everybody, and please feel free to pose a couple of questions after that. Yes. Um, as, as I was mentioning, I think for us, the most important disruption we had to make is open the art world to people who felt excluded from it before, even if they probably had the purchase power or they were interested in it, but somehow they didn't feel included. Um, so yes, we made art a commodity. This is an f for people to have access to creativity, because creativity is so important to inspire leaders, to inspire even people working in finance, because artists are giving another view on the world and we do believe that actually when you purchase a piece of art you're not just purchasing a canvas yes. you're purchasing something that will bring you emotion gives you ideas on an everyday basis and also you have done another step forward because I checked in your uh, website you also promote artists so you go further you promote them you support them and you can also um, how can I say, um, uh, 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 promote them to, to clients that they want to make art from a specific artist, right? Yes, is... you, you can ask for a commission from an artist that you like. I'm really emphasizing that we do represent Greek artists. It's really important for me to, to highlight this. And uh, yes, we, we work also now with some of our best artists to work on their brands, how we can go further in supporting them not only to sell their pieces, but really like get exhibitions, we go to fairs, um, we're going to open some retail shops in Germany, for instance. So we're trying to see how we can bring artists really to everyday lives of people. Thank you. Thank you. And Kalyop, I would like to, see, to ask you whether you have measured your impact and uh, whether Europe has been an ally in this journey of yours. Um, yes, we do measure it. Of course, the digital experience is always easy to, to measure and we have uh, reached, we say that 15,000 uh, children and, and um, people uh, yearly benefit from our activities, but then we think that um, the number is more than that because, as you said earlier, the parents and the educators, they are the, mul multipliers, the multipliers in what we do. So, for example, imagine uh, like the last three days we had three educational programs for teachers, like 
teacher training programs, and every day 150 teachers um, participated in those. And these teachers, they're, they're going to go back to their classrooms and offer that education to their um, to their students. So they're multiplying the experience. They are they are able to share their knowledge with their classrooms and the, and the teachers. So we do measure everything and we, we do so, see growth. And um, since the, the, the pandemic, where we were very fast to react because we are a small and very flexible team, we were very fast to react with technological solutions and in order to um, disseminate the, the content to everywhere in Greece and Cyprus, we saw that growth. We, it's, it's, a, it's tangible and then the numbers are there. Uh, but I wanted to ask Dimitris one question, if, if I may. And uh, there's a lot of uh, discussion in, in, in our team, whether because we are dealing with young people and because we are, this is, the, they are the ones who are set, buying our tickets whether they are digital or physical uh, screenings, they are the ones to whom we are selling. And there is this discussion about the film festival of the future and whether this is going to be taking place in the metaverse, where this is going to be taking place in smaller communities like home entertainment units. What is the future going to be like when it comes to, <laughs> to film festivals? I, I great, might as well use question. your knowledge. Great question. <laughs> let's, uh, se let's discuss again what is the metaverse. There is not only one metaverse, they will be the metaverses. Of course, all corporations and uh, uh, startups out there, they're going to make their own vision of metaverse. We have Facebook that rename uh, to Meta, we have Microsoft uh, with Microsoft Mesh, we have uh, HP, we have a lot of actual companies building a vision from the metaverse. Imagine that Nike bought uh, Artifacts, which is a brand that uh, design NFT sneakers, so they uh, acquire them. We saw that uh, Disney uh, bought Vivo, which is an NFT marketplace. So everyone is moving to the metaverse, and for me, metaverses will be just uh, a Web3 concept of the internet. Uh, we had uh, the actual pages that we saw the page and we just consume. Then we went to Web 2 that we have YouTube videos, that we can have comments, that we, ha that we can participate or publish content. And then now we have uh, virtual reality and extended reality and augmented reality. These are all technologies that exist for 15 years right now. So it's a physical evolution to go and uh, see a concert there. So for me, uh, the future of the festivals is uh, augmented reality for the next five years, uh, just having classes that you can see uh, information, then virtual reality uh, from the convenience of your own home, but also grouped together, and in the end, actual transmissions with uh, jump switch and break computer interfaces in the next 20 years. Okay. Uh, since time is running, we're running out of time. I would like Yanis to ask you. Uh, Joseph has said uh, just before producing, starting the production of Zmini Agapemeni, that uh, you want to produce films that uh, talk to the soul of the people. How important is this for you, and how is this received by the rest of the world? Uh, first of all, Joseph is very passionate uh, about, about the Greek history. So whatever has to do with Greek history, he's ready to invest uh, in it. But uh, I believe uh, that uh, it's not only history. There are very nice stories that we can share to the world. And uh, if, I'm, if, I may, if I may say technology, can help us and export these stories. It's very difficult, the, the Greek productions, due to the language, uh, to go abroad. So, uh, as physical distribution, uh, meaning a Greek movie to play in a theater uh, in the States, except the Greek film festivals, it's very difficult. But, 
if uh, we achieve that uh, digital content, uh, Greek production of digital content can go anywhere and uh, can reach all the, all the world, all, all the corners of the earth. Regarding the festivals, if I may add, uh, <coughs> festival, it's a physical exhibition of content at this stage. The physical exhibition of content, and I'm moving out of the festivals, it's also part of entertainment. And entertainment, it's at home and out of home. Will change, but will be there always, because it's a different habit. Mm. Differently we consume at home, and differently we consume out of home. There are deliveries, there are very good restaurants bring you food at home but you want to go out, you want to socialize. It's exactly going back to my previous argument. Thank you, Yanis. And last question to Mrs. Efremoglu. How much do you see this creative industry grow in the future? Taking under consideration your participation in the, for example, the Athens Chamber of Commerce, how important it is for creative economy to grow and what should we do to promote it more? Uh, a lot. I don't believe that it's a hype. Uh, I believe that it's for real. And uh, at the foundation, we are going to help the Greek ecosystem grow. Um, you will see what we are going to do in the next uh, few months. And uh, uh, with the competitions, we are going to give for free uh, the use of our 3D printing equipment. Uh, for everyone, uh, the, our VR installations for kids and educational programs uh, during the summer. I believe it will be for the ages of uh, 12 to 15 uh, in uh, innovation and uh, XR and uh, NFTs, why not? Um, because um, unfortunately we uh, lack in uh, digital education and uh, girls more than boys. So that's the next steps. Thank you very much. And let's, let's hope that the investor will see the opportunity. And as always, they're seeking to balance the, the desire of financial return to also satisfy their values and their social priorities. Thank you very much for being here. It was uh, indeed uh, a great, uh, great joy. And, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I believe that uh, people, sorry, we don't have time for questions, but you can meet and exchange ideas with uh, the speakers. Thank you very much for this honor.